Hi, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are good. Welcome back to the reading practice session. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Thank you. So let's begin with another test today. I'll share my screen. Please make sure that you have something to note down your timings to solve and post the questions. Make sure you're participating, you're posting your answers, and then be ready with pen and papers to take notes of the discussion part. Make sure you're very, very active when the discussion is going on. And we will discuss each question twice, and then we'll move on to the next one. So here you have your first question on the screen. You have two and a half minutes. Those who have been attending the classes since a while now, please make sure that you're definitely timing yourself. So this is your question. Good question. Two and a half minutes and then post your answers, please.
All right, should be done. Let's discuss the answers. Very good question and easy one. New York Slave Rebellion of 1712. What was it? A violent insurrection of slaves in New York City that dashed in brutal executions and the enactment of harsher slave codes. So whatever happened, this happened in 1712. So what we need in the answer should be past form of verb. So anything which is not past form, we should first eliminate that. The past form of lead is also the same spellings, but we pronounce it as lead. So both A and C are past forms of verbs. Now what we have to check is what is written after the blank. So which of these two options go with in preposition? So the answer is resulted because lead goes with to. Lead, 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 lead to, lead to, but resulted goes with in. So two things to check, preposition and um, tense in the first blank. The population of New York City in 1712 numbered dash 6,000 and 8,000 people. So whenever we have two things, we always go with between these two. So within is used for limit. We did this yesterday as well. From is used with source and in is a basic preposition that we all understand. Um, so the population numbered between 6,000 and 8,000 people of dash 1,000 were slaves. So whenever we are reading our sentences, we can always eliminate the LY words, means the adverbs to make the sentences shorter, simpler and more understandable. So the population was between 6,000 and 8,000 people of dash 1,000 were slaves. And I'm not very happy with those who have written of which. Do we use which for human beings? Do we refer to human beings with the word which, which is used for things, organizations, institutions, or non-living things more? When, especially when you have whom and then in them in the options, then also selecting which is a very big mistake. So for human beings, we use whom or them, just the writing style differs. If you want to put them, you need a subject. For example, the sentence should be, the population numbered between 6,000 and 8,000 people, full stop. Some of them were slaves. So if you want to put them, then you need a subject like some, like many, many of them, some of them. Then, then we can use the word them. But if you don't have a subject, then you're just referring in the continuation sentence. Then we'll go with whom. Of whom means out of whom. Out of this number, 1,000 were slaves. So it's important, one important thing is to understand the writing style because this is also a base on which you get blanks in the exam. That do you understand what are the different writing styles in English language? Unlike Southern plantations where groups of slaves were relatively isolated dash one another, the slaves in New York City were in frequent contact with each other. So, um, Isolated generally comes with isolated from, and it makes sense with the other part also. From one another is how we um, use the words. For example, we can say um, they are separated from one another. They are distinguished from one another. So we use from one another together as a combination. Otherwise, isolated also comes with from. Then this say the rebellion of 1712 dash by African born slaves. So by always tells us that it is a passive statement. Those who have uh, done the videos, they will know the concept of by inactive and passive. So by statements are always passive statements. And when we look at the option, something with had is active and ing is always active. So we cannot go with a and d. C is wrong English, has been, was instigated is no English. You cannot put has and was together with the verb. You can put one of them. So what are the what is the only option we are left with? So this is also a method, uh, elimination method that you can solve your answer. But otherwise, those who understand the concept of active and passive, then also you should know that rebellion had not done the work. The work is done by African born slaves. So that is why when the doer is given after the blank, that's a passive statement. And had goes in active and ing goes in active. So we have to go with was instigated. This rebellion was done by African slaves. Right? 
So these are the answers. The first one, we first have to check the tense and then the preposition. So tense was passed, preposition is in. So we have to go with resulted because lead or led goes with to, not with in. Then whenever we have two things, we go with between in that case. And if we want to go with out of whom or them, them is used when you start a sentence with a subject because here we don't have a subject. We are continuing that we, there, was these, there were these many people, comma, of, dash, 1000 were slaves. So we'll go with of whom. Of whom means out of these. So that is the meaning of of whom. No, I never said that whom is used for singular person. There's no such uh, rule for whom. Whom can be used with singular or plural anywhere. Like I'm saying, of whom means out of which, but whom which cannot be used for human beings. So that is why we are referring to human beings, people as whom. Whom has nothing to do with singular or plural. The word isolated always comes with isolated from, otherwise from one another is also a combination of words. The last one was a passive statement and passive statements don't go with had plus ed or ing form. The C option is wrong English in itself. So the only option we are left with is was instigated, which makes sense also that uh, African born slaves instigated the rebellion. So the doer is given after the blank. So we have to go with was plus third form. That is used to refer to singular um, things. <clears throat> this is the dress that I bought from Sydney. That. Has, have, and had are all active unless and until they have been or being with them. Right, any confusions, anyone? All good. So here you have question number two on your screens and you have two and a half minutes to post your answers for this one.
Okay, let's discuss the answers. This one says when writers struggle to express through dash newspaper columns, the cartoon manages in a pointed one liner. So what we have in the options is frequent. Frequent means how many times. Newspaper columns have nothing to do with how many times. We can have number of columns, but not how many times something is done. That is frequency. Numerous and many both means the same. Numerous is a better academic ver version of many only. And a few is when you want to uh, write a negative writing style that not many, when you want to say very few. But here there was no hint that the newspaper columns were uh, less in number or few in number. So that is why we'll go with numerous because many and numerous, as I said, mean the same. But one of the criteria on which we are marked in reading blanks is better academic strength of the words, the words which are academically strong, which are um, not the ones which we use in daily life and they are the better writing versions of those words are always preferred. Little wonder then that the first thing most of us like to see when we pick up a newspaper is the cartoon. Simple though it may seem, making a cartoon is an art that requires a dash of hard work, training and good sense of humor. So after a uh, comes a noun, that is our analysis. Uh, and it should be obviously a singular noun a dash of hard work, training, and good sense of humor. So a dash of three things. Sequence, um, sequence is one, two, three, four. Hard work, training, and sequence cannot be one, two, three. And to make cartoon, we don't want to do a division of these three things. And connection is always used with connection between two things. So we can go with combination because combination can be of as many things as possible so it has nothing to do with one or two so we need a combination of these three things cartoonists say that the cartoons that make us laugh the most are in fact the cartoons that are dash to make so when we look at the options we have v1 difficult we have v2 tougher and then we have two options in v3 this is v2 and two options in V3. That means the answer is based on understanding of the forms of verbs. So you should be selecting your answer based on which form of verb is the sentence in. So when they say cartoons that make us laugh the most, means the maximum laugh that we do on cartoons, means third form of verb. Most is third form of verb. So we also need third form of verb. We cannot say cartoons which make us the maximum laugh are difficult to make. Every cartoon is difficult to make or every cartoon can be difficult to make. This is not the writing style. So whatever form of verb they are using, we also have to continue the same form of verb. For example, if I say the dress which takes the maximum hours to be ready is difficult to make. We say the dress which takes the maximum hours to get ready is the most expensive one. So you have to match. This is called understanding writing styles. So this is V3. We'll also go with V3. We have nothing to do with V1 and V2. And hardest to make or simplest to make. So obviously they will be the hardest. Uh, even if you don't understand hardest or simplest by reading this sentence, when you read the next sentence, you will get to understand that they are talking about difficulty, not simplicity. When they say dash celebrated cartoonists like RK Lakshman admit that making a cartoon is not a piece of cake means it is not an easy job. So we cannot go with that. The best cartoons are very easy to make. So simplest cannot be the answer. Now we need something to start a sentence. The sentence has only one piece of information. So whenever we have one piece of information, though cannot come in that case because though always comes, although, though, despite, they always come when you have two pieces with a comma in between. So although, although, despite is not possible, nevertheless comes with the comma after the blank. There is no comma. So nevertheless cannot be the answer. Almost celebrated cartoonist almost comes with quantitative things. I have almost finished the work, means 80%, 90%, 70%. Almost all the people, again, means more than 50% of people. So almost shows quantity. We cannot say almost cartoonists because they haven't said almost all cartoonists say this thing. Without all, we cannot say almost here. 
so we can simply say that because you already said that they are difficult even the celebrated cartoonists they also admit celebrated means the most popular ones they also admit that making a cartoon is not an easy task lakshman says he has to wait for over 6 hours which includes spending a lot of time scanning newspapers and television channels before any idea dash him so what tense is the statement in present tense so we also need present tense so if there would be anything past you should be first eliminate that but we don't have it idea is singular so we need a verb with s that should be the second check all the verbs are with s that means the answer is based on context so context means with the noun idea what is the best verb which can go idea reflects him i reflects means shows idea catches him so idea cannot catch a human being idea strikes him we use this word strike i have got an idea so got or get in the better academic word means strikes for example you you might have heard this thing how did uh, this idea strike you so that simply means how did you get this idea so strike is the word verb that we normally uses with the or i should say academically use use with the noun idea idea and strike is a combination which means gets only so these are the answers the first one we are not talking about frequency which is how many times and the sentence is nowhere negative so we cannot go with a few many and numerous are synonym so you have to go with better academic word which is numerous and there can be a combination of three things because obviously you require training you need sense of humor you need hard work to make any job possible and these three things are not sequences or divisions or connection this is a combination that you need all three things together that is the meaning of combination then the third was based on writing style that the sentence needed you to select third form of verb because they are using the third form of verb and out of third forms the hardest and simplest were two options and then based on context that making cartoons is not easy so that is why you have to go with hardest fourth one nevertheless always comes with a comma uh, though always comes when you have two parts in the sentence one positive and one negative almost signifies quantity so that is why we have to go with even the most popular cartoonists admit that it is very difficult and the last one idea dash him idea is singular we need a verb with s and then the verb strikes is a better academic version of the word get only how did you get this idea how did this idea strike you so that's why again we have to go with better academic combination of idea plus verb any confusions anybody in this question <coughs> good harpal well done question number 3 on your screens 2 and 1/2 minutes to post your answers for this
Okay, well done. Now this is one of the questions where uh, you should be targeting a really good or the best that you can score. So this says, so how does one become a cartoonist? Which of us has the talent to make it? How can we master the rib tickling strokes and the witty one liners? How can we make people laugh or smile? There are few colleges or schools for cartoonists. Most cartoonists come from art colleges, dash, some learn the craft on their own. So whenever we um, kind of give two sides of the coin, then we always use while in between. That while some people learn from here, the others learn from there. That means we are um, dividing the 100 person into two different categories. So that is when we use while and almost all of you are correct in selecting that. Also cannot, uh, also is not used to connect two pieces of information of two different categories or segregation, despite comes with whenever you want to put even after. So this we did yesterday as well. If you ever want to put despite anywhere, put even after at that place and only then go with despite. And simultaneously means the same, but these two things are not same. Some people are learning, learning at colleges and some people are learning by themselves. So what is same in this, right? Most cartoonists are of the view that no institute can teach you to make a cartoon. The sentence is absolutely complete. Whenever we have complete sentences and after the blank, we have a noun. In that case, we have to fill the blank with an adjective. Means what kind of cartoonists? Official, do we have official and unofficial cartoonists? Established means popular. Validated is used for documents. Validated document means something which has valid uh, reason, context, something. And people are not important or unimportant in their fields. Can we say this important doctor? No. So cartoonist is also a profession. The answer was also somehow given a hint that established cartoonists is how they are using the combination, how they are using the word to describe the kind of cartoonists. So we'll go with established. Established means the ones which have strong place in their profession. Those people are called established, renowned, known. So they are of the view that no institute can teach you to make a cartoon. You can pick up the craft. You may learn to sketch and draw in institutes, but no one can teach anyone how to make a good cartoon. While basics like drawing and sketching dash in an art college, uh, these alone do not make a good cartoonist. So the um, hint again was given in these two sentences. This sentence basically, that's why such a long sentence was given here. That you can pick up a craft, but no one can teach you to make a good cartoon. Basics can be learned in an art college. The same writing style with uh, can is being used. If we look at the otherwise options, we cannot say while basics uh, drawing and sketching are learning because that will mean drawing and sketching is learning how to draw. So drawing and sketching cannot do or uh, learn something. And it's not about future tense. And again, have comes with doer. Drawing and sketching have been learned by whom? So this was not about active and passive here. They were giving us the possibilities. Like we can learn drawing and sketching in art college, but nobody can make us a good cartoonist. Because it is a question of one's dash and sense of humor, with apostrophe, we always go with the noun. So objectivity, creativity, valuable is not a noun. Vision is a noun. So we have three nouns. So because means a good being a good cartoonist, to become a good cartoonist, it is a question of one's dash and sense of humor. So what are the two things we need to become a cartoonist? Obviously, it is art. So the first thing we need is creativity. No art can be done without creativity. Two qualities one simply may not have. The advice established cartoonists give is that just because you can sketch, don't take it for dash that you will become a cartoonist. So for granted is a very common collocation that we use. And for lenient, what is the meaning of for lenient? So to take something, take something for granted means you take it over, assume it over easy thing that is for granted that I can do it doesn't matter what that is for granted. 
so these are the answers the first one whenever we compare two things while some here others there this writing piece is always connected using while established cartoonist the sentence was complete cartoonist is a noun so we always have to describe the noun with an adjective means the kind word is required an established cartoonist was a hint given in the sent paragraph itself the third one was again the hint given there that we are talking about possibilities you can learn here you can learn there you can learn in art college but nothing makes you a good cartoonist and two things which everybody requires two important qualities creativity because you are talking about art at the end of the day and the last one for granted taking something for granted is a collocation take for granted <clears throat> is a combination of words any confusions anyone her palette should be five for you <clears throat> question number four good tamanna well done if we need a verb zoya only then we use ing form of verb here we did not need a verb i said it's a collocation taking something for granted it can never be taking something for granting right so shake if you still have a doubt see it it is uh, impossible that we can repeat everything for a particular blank again three four five times because there are around 60 students attending so we have to finish also that's why we upload the recording so if you still have a major doubt you can go back to the recording and listen to the explanation again question on your screen so next one two and a half minutes and post your answers please
all white should be done. Don't use markers on the screen. <clears throat> so this is the past year and a half has brought levels of stress to everyone, but parents in particular shouldered an extra load. So somehow the sentence is complete. Levels is a noun. So we need what kind of levels of stress we have got. So fantastic. When we read uh, ahead, we come to know that they were talking about negative things, not positive because of this COVID era is what I think the context is. So it is not fantastic anything about COVID. Uncommon, unusual or unprecedented. So uncommon and unusual both can be conveyed with the word unprecedented. Unprecedented basically means unmatched. So unmatched means something that you have never seen before. During the COVID times, this word was very commonly used in newspapers and in any form of news that this unprecedented COVID-19 times have made the world like this. So uh, we are fa uh, facing unprecedented problems unprecedented situations so unprecedented means unmatched you had no earlier uh, time period from which you can take inspiration and pass through this so that is called unprecedented it's a very common word to come in blanks as well so it should be in your vocab list so a uh, lot of stress and those who are writing fantastic please read the sentence till the full stop so it has brought unprecedented levels of stress to everyone, but parents in particular shouldered an extra load as children's schedules were turned to dash. So if you are talking about stress, so obviously this, there's something negative that happened to children's schedules and emotions. Uh, they were turned all over, turned upside down, turned inverted, turned inside out. See, with the verb turned upside down is a collocation or you can understand it as a phrase. When something completely becomes a mess, that is called turned upside down. That whatever way you were going, it completely changed. For example, going to school, getting up in the morning, getting ready, going to school, meeting friends, studying in classrooms. All these things completely change to sitting in your phone walls and study with computers. So, just giving you an example of what can be the meaning of getting upside down. Complete opposite. Inverted is not something that we can use to express children's lifestyle. Somebody's life doesn't go inverted. And again, life cannot go inside out. So inside out can be used for um, buildings. Uh, I need this building to be painted inside out. Means both inside and outside. That's how we can use inside out. In fact, uh, to 2021 emotions report shows that women with young children at home were hit the hardest in terms of pandemic stress and worry. As the pace of daily life begins to pick up with the back to school session, it's more important than ever for busy parents to find a few minutes of me time to decompress every day. Dash, finding the time can be a struggle. So both the sentences are talking about finding time. One is positive, the other one is negative. So here we are saying few minutes of me time. It's very, very important to find me time every day. And then we are saying finding the time is a struggle. It means one side positive, one side negative. So you have to select your uh, connector based on this contrast thing. So but... Still, still cannot go with contrast. Still is used with something which has started and is continuing. That is when we use the word still. You can write an example. Uh, it is still raining. That means rain started some time ago and it is happening right now as well. Continuing now as well. That is the meaning of still. Yet can be a better form of uh, writing the word but or only. And already is related to time. So already is when you finish something before the limit, before the time, then we use the word already. So here out of but and yet, yet is better academic. So we'll go with that. Yet means but still. Also, you can simplify yet for your help that whenever you want to put but and still together, then you can use the connector but, sorry, you can use the connector yet. 
how is it fitting here is you said in the previous sentence that everybody knows it is important but still finding that time is a struggle so that is why but and still both are needed that's exactly why the mental wellness app breathe meets parents where they are at ensuring that self care becomes a reality and not just a hopeful wish breathe's personalized approach which easily dash self care into your day instead of just adding another item to the to do list delivers right to your phone okay so our noun is singular breathe's personalized approach which dash self care into your day so approach is singular so we need a verb with s so we have nothing to do with past tense here so now this approach combines self care into your day combines is not possible because for combines there should be two things and we only have one noun which is approach approach integrates self care into your day integrates could be understand as incorporates and the last one approach consolidates self care into your day see consolidate is a verb that we don't use for general life like this we use it in business context consolidation uh, or we use it when you are taking so many things and combining them into one thing that that's also when we use consolidate bringing various aspects and um, joining them to form one aspect that is consolidation here we are just talking about involving something in our life in our daily routine so that is integrate or incorporate so this approach easily incorporates self care easily involves self care easily integrates means puts self care into our day and consolidates cannot be a word to be used in place of puts something into so these are the answers unprecedented you should be noting it down which is unmatched it generally goes with unprecedented time unprecedented era unprecedented means unmatched with something the second one life has turned upside down means completely the opposite it used to be but still together means yet and the last one uh, it easily puts self care into our daily routine so puts can be integrates or incorporates any confusions anybody see there's a lot of things that you should be noting down during the explanation make sure you're doing that otherwise you're only taking 30 40% advantage of these classes by just listening to and marking your answers because if something exactly same comes you will be able to do that but if your concepts are not on your mind and your heart you don't learn them by heart you don't know them and understand them by heart it's going to be a tough call in the exam question number 5 2 and 1/2 minutes then post your answers
let's discuss the answers for this question many of today's students are tuning into the dash of a career in financial planning so after the comes a noun dash of a career tuning into means stepping into dash of a career in financial planning chance of a career chance is a very very casual word we generally don't use it in uh, writing formal english and we don't have any scenarios of a career there can be possibilities of a career potentials in a career see most of you have written potentials potential is a word that we use for capability we use potential for the student has a lot of potential means the student has a capability to do something there cannot be potentials of a career and particularly when you are saying students are trying to find out possibilities of a career in financial planning financial planning is just a field they are trying to find career in that field they are not uh, tuning into the potentials of a career capabilities of a career no possibilities is there a possibility for them to have a career in financial planning that is what the sentence is then they say according to the bureau of labor statistics the demand for personal financial advisors is expected to grow at a rate of 4% through 2029 in part because of the increasing numbers of baby boomers who are retiring and are more dashed to seek planning advice from personal financial advisors so we are talking about even if you don't understand what is the meaning of baby boomers here increasing number of dash who are retiring so obviously people because retiring is people only number of people are retiring and they are more dash to seek advice from personal financial advisors this is how this is a technique called simplifying the sentence by eliminating the difficult words so that you can understand what exactly it means so people are retiring and they are more appropriate to seek planning advice they are more applicable they are more relevant they are more likely to it's better likely just means they are more possible um something when when you talk about the possibility of something happening then we say likely this is likely to happen and are more likely to seek planning advice means there are more possibilities that they want planning advice from financial advisors additionally means this is the one thing increasing number of uh, advisors are needed additionally means one more area the replacement of traditional pension plans with individual retirement accounts is expected to continue meaning individuals must save and invest for their own retirement dash increasing the demand for personal financial advisors this is a second reason why the demand for personal financial advisors is going to increase because of this concept which is happening now in the last they say meaning individuals must save and invest for their own retirement dash increasing means all this is increasing the demand so we cannot say including increasing including goes when we give examples otherwise no otherwise gives is used when we go opposite to something but here we are going in the same side we are giving one additional a uh, reason why the demand is going to increase but we cannot go with also because we don't use also in this way that we complete a sentence put a comma and then we say also this 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 that's not how also is used so here we'll go with further further means this also is increasing it means also only it conveys also only but we can use it because further is a conjunction it can be used to connect two pieces together so this is a complete uh, statement meaning individuals must save and invest for their own retirement this sentence starting from additionally has a complete meaning here we can put a full stop but we are not putting it we are still continuing increasing the demand how are we increasing the demand further increasing means more increasing the demand but we cannot say also increasing here a certified financial planner professional works one on one with their clients to develop strategies for meeting both short term and long term financial goals because the next sentence very clearly say these goals so we cannot say objectives here these goals might include dash student debt saving for a house or planning for an adventure filled retirement so it will be paying off means paying back so the goals why are you uh, investing your money because you want to 
pay your pay back your debt that you have taken as a student so that is paying off the debt right so these are the answers possibilities of a career not potentials of a career potentials are in the people to do something in life and then the second one likely nothing else fits actually uh, or out of further and also further is better because we don't use also in this writing style that the sentence is in and goals because it was given in the next sentence and debt is always paid back so paid back means paid off right any confusions anybody in this question <coughs> Good to manna, very well done. 21 out of 24 is a good score. Good improvement. No, Shivam, it can be possibilities as well because like I said, financial planning is financial, uh, what was it? Financial planning is just an area. There can be a lot of career um, options in financial planning as well. Can be financial advisor, you can be financial, um, a lot of things. I'm not from that field, I don't know. But yes, there are lots of uh, designations that you can have in financial planning. Anybody who's in this field can give us examples of what can be a different designations in financial planning, <coughs> apart from financial advisor. Investment advisor. Nobody? No one has an idea? Okay, anyhow. So we are starting with the orders. First question on your screens and you have two minutes and then post your answers. not a good one so most of you have written b as the first sentence the american heart association diet and lifestyle recommendation this is a name of the organization right because r is also in capitals 
so we say the a suggest an overall healthy or we can say the organization suggest an overall healthy dietary pattern that emphasizes this 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 why what is the problem to whom are they suggesting this men women children which disease are they giving this dietary pattern for so you just see the capital letters and this is the first one stop doing this stop assuming your own set of rules which nobody has taught you ever so this is not the first sentence because it is incomplete it doesn't even tell us what is the problem why are they suggesting this to whom they are suggesting this the first sentence was c in which you have the topic that in two separate studies analyzing different measures of healthy plant food consumption researchers found that both young adults and post menopausal women had fewer heart attacks and were less likely to develop cardiovascular disease when they ate more healthy plant foods so they are talking about two separate studies for this and what the researchers have found and then <laughs> there were this sentence d is very very important it says it also advises means before this will come a sentence in which there is an advice and also advises the second advice that we have here so now will come be the american heart association because this is the name of organization this organization suggest also means suggestion means advice it also advise it means this organization also gives this suggestion so first suggestion and second suggestion and then you are particularly explaining one study one study title this is this evaluated whether a long term consumption of a plant centered diet and a shift towards plant centered diet starting in young adulthood are associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease in midlife even if let's say you didn't understand where to put a because it was not very clear so what i always keep on saying is that one sentence which is not fitting anywhere put it at the end don't break your sequence which is actually right and because of your overthinking you put it somewhere in between and break your own sequence so it should be two separate studies if this study has to come here they'll explain the second one as well one study this the other study this then you can put it after the first one but otherwise <clears throat> because here the topic is about plant food consumption so give the uh, first say that okay these are the diets suggested and then there was one study which evaluated whether this diet whether this plant centered diet has any effect or not anyhow b d should have been a pair and you should have started with c those who have started with d that's a big mistake but one mark should have come from this okay the second one 2 minutes and then post your answers
good. Some of you have done it well. So this says uh, the first sentence is B because that's our topic. Electoral arrangements vary enormously. Those who have written D as the first sentence, please try that you get into this concept of what is the first sentence. First sentence is the most general sentence out of all the sentences. A sentence which tells you, okay, this is the topic. You first start explaining. Now, electoral, electoral arrangements vary. Vary means they are different. Very, very different. That's it. And then you explain why are you saying that it is different. Some democratic countries, they divide in this way. The others divide in the other way. That is why we are saying that it is different. Some democratic countries divide their territories into electoral districts, each of which is entitled to a single seat, the seat being won by the candidate who gains the most votes, hence the terms first past the post in Britain and winner takes all the seats in the US. So this is just one way that one type of electoral arrangement, there can be many other types of electoral arrangements also. So you have to understand many, uh, some democratic countries and then in the US, these were the examples of the differences in electoral arrangements. And then you have A where they say as critics of this system, you just explain the system that how the system works. And then you say as critics of this system point out in districts contested by two more than two candidates, it is possible to gain the seat with less than a seat. So they're explaining further that what do the people say about this system? And the end obviously will be as a result, a party that receives only a minority of votes in the entire country could win a majority of seats in the legislature because this is what the continuation says. So understand the first sentence will always tell you this is the topic. The second sentence will explain the meanings, the justification, the examples. Right? <clears throat> this is your third question on the screen. Two minutes to post your answer.
I have a question. I want you to answer that question and then you can change your answers. 50% of you. So the question is, what is Titan? In this question, in this reorder, what is Titan? Give your answers in the chat box. What is Titan in this question? Titan is a moon, Titan is a sun, Titan is what? So which sentence tells you that Titan is Saturn's moon? E, right? Why are we putting others D, C, B, A as the first ones? So those who are putting D as the first sentence saying NASA's Dragonfly mission, which will send a rotorcraft relocatable lander to Titan's surface. Which, what is Titan? How can you say we are sending this to Titan and it's, oh, sorry, Titan is Saturn's sun. This is not the way of or chronological order sequence. So you have to start with E, that among our solar systems, many moons, Saturn's Titan means the moon of Saturn, which is called Titan stands out. It is the only moon with a substantial atmosphere and liquid on the surface. This is where you're introducing that out of all the moons, we are going to talk about moon of Saturn, whose name is Titan. And then you start talking about Titan. Without introduction, you cannot start giving details. We are sending this to Titan. We are sending that to Titan. So this is the way of finding the first sentence that where is the introduction? Then you say it is the only moon with the atmosphere and liquid. Then the story continues. It also has, it even has, even also is used in the same way like also. It even has a weather system like Earth, though it rains methane instead of water. Then we have two sentences which are talking about NASA's Dragonfly mission. And there's one sentence which is only talking about Titan. Might it also host some kind of life? Means it has to come with when we are saying Titan has this, Titan has that. Maybe Titan also has life. So otherwise, if we don't put A here, we cannot put it in between D, B or after D, B because how will we justify it and also in that case, right? Also won't fit then. Also has to come with when you are talking about the same things. It has atmosphere, it has liquid, it also has a weather system. It might also have life. This is not exactly a question for which we need an answer. This is kind of a... A uh, question that a person asked to himself or herself. It might also, it has a life, you never know. So that is that type of question mark. Right, so then you will go with the first uh, NASA's Dragonfly mission is this, 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 and it has big goals. And then you explain the goals. The goals are these and these. Right? Bit more understanding, analysis, not just... Uh, trying to finish it that should not be your agenda putting the pairs together should be your goal <coughs> okay let's begin with reading questions the first one on your screens you have two minutes to post your answer
should be done by now those who don't read the complete sentences till the full stop please it's a request you will get one two extra marks if you will do that <clears throat> In 1432, the Flemish painter, this person, completed his masterpiece with the help of his brother, Hubert, Adoration of Mystic Lamp, which was later put on dash in this place, Belgium. So we are talking about an artwork, I think, because this person is a painter, so obviously his masterpiece would be a painting. So we are talking about this person completed a painting, which was later put on dash in this place. Paintings are put on display for people to see. The dash work, major work, most of you have written major work. Who told you it was major or not minor? Read the sentence. Are they talking about major or not major or minor or what do they want to say in the sentence? The dash work measuring this feet by this feet. What is major in feet? Length and height of a painting. So it is enormous. They wanted to say it was very big. 4.4 by 3.5 meters. 11 feet long. So 11 feet has nothing to do with major. Feet means height. We are talking about numbers. So we are talking about how big it is. And weighing more than 2 tons. Features 12 interior panels that depict in great detail and brilliant color. Various biblical figures and events. Dash, one of the most important artworks in history. The altar piece was the first major oil painting. This is major. They are telling us. We cannot come to know it was major or not. Now what we have in capitals is observed one of the important artworks or considered. So for a painting, we can consider it as an important painting. We cannot observe it as an important painting. <clears throat> uh, so it was the first major oil painting and it marked the dash from Middle Age to Renaissance art. After the comes a noun, we have two nouns in the option. It marks the distinction, but distinction is between. If we are having uh, two things, then it should be between two things. But here we are having two things, but we have from and to. Distinction, what doesn't go with from and to? So we have to go with transition. And transition always shows a change from one to another. So transition can come with from and to. Unfortunately, according to historians, it also has the unfortunate dash of being the most stolen artwork. So before off, we need a noun. And all of you have written a verb here, reveal. See, it's not always important that you will understand the thing. Don't even try to do that. That trying is first mistake. Go with rules. I need a noun. How many nouns do I have? Only one. That is my answer. Because your understanding can go wrong, but the rule can never go wrong. So if you say, but what meaning does distinction make here, ma'am? That's not your job. Because it's impossible that every time we will understand their point of view, that what were they trying to say when they were writing this sentence. Don't go into that depth. Unfortunate is not a noun. Is unfortunate a thing, an event, a book, a place, a name? What is the definition of a noun, Harpal? Unfortunate is an adjective. Right? <clears throat> uh, before of, we always need a noun. After the, we always need a noun. <clears throat> Writing down things will help. If you would have noted down this rule, which we keep on doing every day in more than one questions, still making a mistake because we don't want to use the rules before we use our mind. We only use the rule where our mind doesn't, you know, understand. We never doubt our understanding that maybe my understanding can be wrong, so I should better use the rule first. Right? Change your sequence, change your methods, only then the scores will change. Question number two, two minutes and post your answers for this.
less options, less difficulty. Children dash their parents because of nature and nurture. So children is plural. We need a verb without S. And the only verb that we have without S is resemble. Resemble means to look same. So children resemble their parents because of nature and nurture. But nature and nurture effects are dash. So with R comes V3. How many do we have? Only one. Intertwined means connected with each other, mixed with each other. Mothers and fathers each pass on half of their genes to their children. And although the other half of their genes are not passed on, they continue to influence the parents' traits and influence the traits in their children. The sentence is absolutely complete. So we need adverb because influence is a verb. How many adverbs do we have? Only one. Ultimately influence the traits in children. For example, parents with a higher genetic propensity for learning may have a greater interest in activities such as reading that in turn nurture learning in their offspring. This concept when parents' genes influence outcomes for their offspring by dash the environment that they provide for them. So after by comes ing form of verb. Before by comes ed, after by comes ing. And there's only one that we have, shaping the environment. It describes how parents' genes indirectly, there's a verb missing here, influence their children's characteristics. How many of you understood that there's a word missing in the last sentence? Be honest with me. <clears throat> Safi, very good. Anybody else? Raman, very well done. Okay, question number three. Two minutes, post your answer.
very good question so this says although lakes are to be found dash the world now we all know that lakes are found everywhere in the world so any word that can mean everywhere is throughout throughout is when we don't want to uh, emphasize on one particular area or country or city then we say throughout means everywhere basically and asia contain about 70% of the total lake water the other continents being less generously endowed lakes also occur far dash the ice sheets of antarctica now <clears throat> ice sheet is at the top and water is below the sheet so it should be lakes occur far below and we don't have below but we do have beneath beneath also means under the sheet so it was based on kind of general knowledge one fourth of the total volume of lake water is spread throughout the world in uncounted numbers of small lakes anyone who has flown dash much of the canadian plains area so we fly over an area over is used when you want to talk about height plus movement and we always uh fly over the land over means distance height and movement continuous movement that is over so anyone who has flown over the canadian plains means anybody who has been on any kind of uh, aviation machine and you have been over the canadian plains area cannot help but be struck by the same seemingly endless scene of lakes and ponds covering the landscape below though the total volume now though tells us that the sentence will have two parts and they should be opposite of each other this is what is called remembering the rules as soon as you look at that word the rule should come in your mind so though means two parts opposite though the total volume of water involved is comparatively small the other side should say big the surface area of lake water is big any word which shows big here substantial the total surface area of, of area of all canadian lakes has been estimated to dash the total surface area of the province of alberta grammar says with two comes first form of verb simplifying the sentence one area to dash the other area now can one area increase the other area not possible but one area can exceed the other area exceed means it is more than the other area so this is what is called simplification one area increase the other area no doesn't make sense one area exceed the other area exceed means more than that it makes sense so throughout the world we have lakes means everywhere beneath means below the sheets there is water third one height plus movement is called over and we always fly over the plains the fourth one though means opposite so the opposite of small is big big word is substantial here and one area can exceed the other area exceed means it is more than the other one any confusions anybody here okay fourth question 2 minutes and post your answers please
all right should be done so the first one says since antiquity philosophers have been theorizing about art dash criticizing it so both are ing forms of verbs that means we have to connect these two things together they have been doing they have been theorizing about art and we can go with rather than criticizing it let's say if we don't know the meaning of theorizing then you could think that rather than is also right as well as is also right as well as will be going if we are in the same side and rather than is when the two things are opposite if we don't know the meaning we can consider both as our options and see if we need one of them at the other blank and then this can be sorted for example plato dash art as an inferior form of knowledge indeed no more than an illusion of knowledge so and this should be past tense plato dash art as something so past tense is regarded we also have believed but believe doesn't go with as regarded goes with as he regarded art as an inferior form of knowledge so basically they are talking negative about uh, art in the republic he describes the painter as a creator of appearances stating that what he creates is untrue again negative a semblance of existence rather than a real existence so we again understand that he is kind of criticizing art that it is not real it is not true a painting is at best an indistinct expression of truth plato dash between the image of something or the thing itself and the true idea of the thing which exists in the mind of god as it were so any verb that goes with between things so we have plato differs means right now he differs but we have to go in past tense plato but we don't have past tense here differs or distinguishes sorry are two options that we have so differs and distinguishes what is more academic is distinguishes not differs moreover differs goes with differ from the other thing one thing differs from the other thing distinguishes comes when both the things are written after the blank this is a very uh, good way of writing very small difference between the word differ and distinguishes differs from distinguishes one and two both are given after uh, the blank so plato distinguishes between this one thing and the two thing according to this understanding the painter deals with the image dash the thing let alone the idea of the thing so all these thing te things tell us that the painter deals with the image not the thing means the idea the focus of the painter is on the image on his painting yes he, he doesn't really bother about the thing itself so here we need rather than more than we need it in the first blank so in the first blank we can go with as well as dash art is deception so all these things were negative and in the end we have the conclusion thus art is deception again a negative word all the words that start with d are negative so art is deception that is the overall conclusion of this paragraph so should have been rather than later on and as well as first because here we cannot go positive when everything is negative and how can we in the end say that the painter deals painter deals with the image as well as the thing then what is the problem if the painter focuses on both the things then there is no problem right so we have to show problem because the whole context is problem so we have to be careful about is the context positive does the writer wants to write positive sentence or negative sentence otherwise our answers can go wrong okay any confusions anyone all good with this question so regarded goes with as distinguishes is better than differs also differs goes with bit from and distinguishes when between and one and two are written after the blank then distinguishes rather than because we have to show negativity if we put as well as there is nothing negative in that sentence and the last one is the conclusion so that is why thus should be the answer all good with everyone
All right. So these were all the questions that we had to do today. I hope it was helpful to you. You had taken a lot of notes. You have learned more about how to solve, how to think rather than how to solve and analyzations of different types of blanks, collocations, how you have to remember them and how to look at a word and have the whole history of that word in your mind. So these are the things more to focus on in these classes rather than, you know, just writing right and wrong answers. So the day you will start learning the essence of what I'm trying to actually discuss, not teach in, in particular. So that would be more helpful. Okay. So those who don't have any questions, yes, you're free to leave. We do have a class tomorrow at the same time, 6.30 p.m. as per Sydney timings. Please do come back. Please practice. Um, don't uh, be absent. Be regular in the classes, all of the classes, not only this one. That will help you to reach to your target, your goal sooner. Till, then till that time, bye-bye. Take care. Good night.